of a day and another video welcome back to the channel everybody today we're watching the big bang theory this is the 11th episode of the fifth season hope you guys have been enjoying it so far if you'd like to watch today's full episode it is available for free in the link in the description below just clicking it put the password in and enjoy so last episode i actually thought was decent you know episode 10 it was basically aim at going out on a date with stuart from the comic book store which was another jealous sheldon episode we've seen him jealous before and it happened again you know basically amy was going out there uh, I think she was trying to make uh, Sheldon jealous, if I'm being honest, and it worked. And it's all because um, they're in a relationship, but not in a relationship. You know, they can't really hold hands, they can't kiss, they don't have sex, they don't get intimate, do they? And she's like basically an acquaintance, a friend. And, um, you know, Stuart was showing some attention and she actually went out. Now, uh, Sheldon's gone, he's had a sit down, he's had a conversation with Penny and she's actually told him X, Y and Z and he's realised that, you know, maybe they do need to be boyfriend and girlfriend. And he's gone, he's actually interrupted their date in the movies, sat down. And he's basically, in his own awkward way, asked Amy out to be his girlfriend, which she accepted, which is great stuff, because that is an advancement forward, isn't it, in the relationship. They've always kind of acknowledged each other as a girlfriend, not a girlfriend, just a friend. And uh, now it's actually a couple when you've got that label. Now, he's gone back to her apartment. He's ushered, you know, um, you know, Stu uh, back away. And when she's come inside, she sat down. Instead of a roommate agreement, it is a relationship agreement. And they're going down and signing here, here, and here. So it's going to be interesting to see how their relationship moves forward. Now, I'm excited for it. and enjoying them both. So, uh, you know, this is a good storyline for me. And I can't wait to see what we do with it. Thanks for checking out today's episode. Hope you guys enjoy it. If you do, please smash the like. really helps out. Subscribe if you're new. And as always, let's jump into today's episode. Did Sheldon change the Wi-Fi password again? Uh, yeah, it's Penny already eats our food. She can pay for Wi-Fi. If you can't get me to stop eating your food, what makes you think you can get me to stop using your Wi-Fi? I believe that you're capable of great change. Something weird. Sure. In the year 2000, <laughs> Pope John Paul II was named an honorary Harlem Globetrotter. This guy, Jimmy Speckerman, he used to torment me in high school. He sent me a message through Facebook. He's in town and wants to have drinks. You're a bully. Are you going to see him? I don't know. Wait, is this the fella who peed in your Hawaiian punch? <laughs> no, that was a different guy. Was he the one who wedged you so hard your testicle reascended and you spent your whole Christmas break waiting for it to come back down? I told you, that was a different guy. Oh, that's too bad. Could have spent New Year's Eve waiting for the ball to drop. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm actually thinking that this guy is, um, he actually wants to make amends with his relationship with um, with Leonard. I feel like some people get to that stage, don't they, where they realise that I was an arsehole, you know. I didn't really have a good past. I actually tormented this kid and it's really not the way you should be and I want to just make amends and say sorry, you know. That's what I'm thinking is going to happen. I feel like we've seen it in other shows like this. It'd just be interesting to see, obviously, the guy come, make amends, and, um, you know, have a happy... You know, because sometimes it could be a weight on Lenny's shoulder that he never realised that he had there, and obviously once it gets resolved, he feels much better about himself. 2 a.m., what are you doing up? Nobel Prize acceptance ceremony streaming live from Stockholm. You should pay attention, Leonard. Some days could be you up there. <laughs> Thanks. So, what's got you up? Did you have a bad clam? <laughs> Look at Dr. Saul Perlmutter up there, clutching that Nobel Prize. Doesn't matter, Saul. You afraid someone's gonna steal it? Like you stole Einstein's cosmological constant? <laughs> oh, now Perlmutter's shaking the king's hand. Yeah, check for your watch, Gustav. You might have lifted it. Yeah, I feel like he's gonna apologize. What's this dress? How come I never see you wear it? Because when I wear it, it's a shirt. When Leonard gets back, I'd love to check his serotonin levels. Do you think he'd let me draw a syringe full of his blood? Well, it's not crazy about needles, but if you get him to go jogging, it'll just pour out of his nose. I don't think I can meet the girl who was always mean to me. One time while I was in gym class, she stole all my clothes and left an elf costume in my locker. That's nothing. In ninth grade, the girls put Rogaine in my hand lotion. Within six months, the nicknames began to fly. I think the one that hurt the most was Gorilla Fingers Fowler. Oh, I don't know. I guess my school was a nice place. We didn't really have bullies. She well, was no the bully. Gave anyone mean nicknames or picked on them or put gum in their hairy knuckles so the school nurse had to use peanut butter to get it out. I don't really like that. I mean, look, we played pranks on each other, but it was never mean. Like, okay, this one girl, Kathy Geiger, got really good grades, so we blindfolded her, tied her up, and left her in a cornfield overnight. Who would have thought Fuzzy Fingers Fowler is best friends with a bully? <laughs> what? <laughs> I was not a bully. Kind of sounds like you were. <laughs> Is that him over there? No. How about that guy? 
He looks like he'd hate you. <laughs> so have you figured out what you're going to say to him? You bet. I am going to make him apologize for all the crap he pulled on me in school. Oh, hi. Holy crap, man. It's good to see you. <laughs> you too. Uh, Jimmy, th th this is Sheldon and Raj and Howard. Fellas, well, hey, can I get a beer? Come on, I read online you're a physicist at a university. You, you want some metal? Well, the new cone metal. Yeah, congratulations. Well, congratulations? The new cone metal? Oh, please. That's the scientific equivalent of a smiley face sticker on your homework. You should have seen this guy back in the day. Huh? He was so little, he could fit in just about anywhere. Lockers, uh, trash cans. Oh, man, how did you get inside that backpack? I'm curious why you wanted to see me. Uh, okay, here it is. You have this great money-making idea. I just need a gearhead to get it to the finish line. What do you think about a pair of glasses that makes any movie you want into 3D? I don't think something like that's even possible. Oh, Man, it works on. now. You can figure it out. You're like the smartest guy I've ever known. The smartest? All right. <laughs> what my spineless friend lacks the courage to say is, you're a terrible person who took advantage of his tiny size, his uncoordinated nature, and his congenital lack of masculinity. That maybe in high school you picked on me a little bit. A little bit, but the man super glued Hershey's kisses to your nipples. This is a list of your heinous acts against Leonard, one of which is certainly the cause of him wetting his bed well into his teens. I always thought we were just having some fun. Well, it wasn't fun for me. You're being too kind, Leonard. You ruined him. <laughs> it was pretty badass, dude. I help the weak. See yet another way I'm exactly like Batman. Yeah, does that not show you a bit of correlation to the story that Penny was just saying when she was talking to Bernadette and Amy? You know, this guy's come in, all banter, all jokes, all having fun, thinks that Leonard's his friend. You know, he's, he's buzzing about all the stuff that they've done in the past. Then he thought that he was just having a good time and two mates bantering together. And it's like, if you look at Penny's conversation that she was saying to the girls, she was basically saying that, um, you know, when she was in school, they never really had bullies. They all just picked on well not she didn't even say they were picked on each other she just said we played pranks on each other and basically saying that you know this one girl is really clever and she passed all the tests we all tied her up and threw her in a cornfield she seen it as banter and everybody having a good time and a laugh and everybody joking and not realized that she was being a bully the same way that this guy's probably only just found out that he was being a bully when he thought that he was just being friendly do you know what i mean so like it is actually interesting it seems like both of the people have been in a position where they thought they were just having a laugh in general and everybody was having a good time but really they were just holding in and picking on one individual anyway i'm really sorry i made fun See of your I mean? stutter in high school oh god just finished the sentence <laughs> no one wants to hear my apologies i think your mistake is doing it over the phone i mean if they could look into your eyes they'd melt You'll feel better by doing something nice for someone. Every other week I serve at a soup kitchen downtown. Ooh, I can't do that. If I stand over a steaming pot, my hair just goes boing. <laughs> about donating some of your clothes. Oh my God, that's perfect. Because I, I have so many clothes I don't wear and they're just taking up space and I go shopping to buy more stuff and I have no place to put it. This will totally fix that. Here's your cocoa. Oh, Half and half instead of whole milk? Yes. Like heated to precisely 183 degrees? Yes. Seven little marshmallows, no more, no less. You got one for good luck. Be the kind of math they do at Princeton. What are you doing here? I want to apologize for stapling your balls. And... <laughs> Stephanie's drunk. Throwing you naked in the girls' locker room. And... I just hope you can forgive me. Sure, I guess. You're a beautiful guy. Oh, well, yeah. Good. <laughs> Thanks, Jimmy. Okay, I gotta go. Yeah, yeah, you okay to drive? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I drive better drunk. You know, it makes you pay attention. Come on in. I'll make you a cup of coffee. Funny, huh, Leonard? Back in school, I was the winner and you were the loser, and now we're reversed. How about that? After all these years, your big, bad high school bully finally apologizes. It's a symbolic gesture to all the bullies who've tormented us for years. We open our home to Jimmy, and once he's asleep, we kill him. So he's just come in, he's apologised, like I say, he didn't realise what he was doing, he's accepted it, which is great, and he's come in and he's basically said, look mate, you know, I was popular, you wasn't, now you're successful and I'm not, basically, and I think that people don't realise, but it's consistent everywhere, on every TV show that you kind of see, that the people that was nerds in school are the ones that are majority always picked on, but they are the most successful people outside of the school environment and they're the ones that have the better life you know like 
it's tough because being in school, you don't want to be in a position where you're potentially being bullied or picked on because of your brains. You know, you want to be in the popular group because you are that younger child, you know, and you want to be with the cool guys. But at the end of the day, like I was just saying there, consistent with films, with TV shows, and from my personal life experience, any person that was the smart group class in school have achieved way more better success than than anybody that i know you know what i mean so like i always think me that if i could give my kid any bit of knowledge or whatever i would say just do as best as you can in school regardless of how people react around you as long as you're proud of yourself you know what i mean and you stick to people that you enjoy yourself with so these are in a social group of scenarios and situations that they enjoy it doesn't matter if people think it's new there you stick to what you believe and you enjoy and you will succeed and like you know that's with everything but i do feel like it happens a lot with people who are clever that people do pick on them and i always think they have the better life me they make the most money they have the better life the most enjoyment and they always seem to stick in their environment as well you know they always hang around with people who are in their lane and i don't know they express themselves the most as well in my personal opinion so it's it is interesting because roles do usually flip. The popular high school jock who didn't make it into college or professional football always ends up having a crapper life than the guy that was just consistently working his way through, being smart and obviously being a scientist or whatever. Is. Uh, I feel just like Mother Teresa, except for the virgin part. That ship sailed a long time ago. Used to be the She's going to take... <gasps> Look at these yeah. someone just threw away. <laughs> Donated. Yes, to a poor waitress who loves a boot cut. <laughs> yeah, in case it comes up again, this right here is an imposition. You're soft. This world's gonna chew you up and spit you out. <laughs> when did I have tacos? Morning, Jimmy. Uh, uh, listen, it's great to see you again, and, and, and thanks for the apology. For all the crappy stuff you did to me in high school. Jeez, you're still harping on that? What a puss. You really know your way around the kitchen, Nancy. I might kill him right now. The dark night has your back. Hey, Jimmy, it's time for you to go. Yeah, all right, let me just finish this. No, you're done. I want you out of my apartment right now. Now get out! <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute unit. You did it, Leonard. You stood up to your bully. Yeah, I feel pretty good about myself. At least he stood up to him, though. He had the confidence to do it. Kind of disappointing. Feel good about this? Then sit in the car and keep it running. Come on, yoga top. Mama needs a new yoga top. Check it out, Bernadette. Suede boots. Your size. God, they're cute. Oh, why did they have to be cute? This is wrong. Let's put everything back. Come on. Here. Somebody else is going to come over. Or maybe Bernadette runs. Yeah. It's okay. I serve soup to poor people. No, to be honest, like, that's actually really, really bad, isn't it? Ste um, is it stealing? Technically, is it's donating, so you've not really pinched it off anybody, but like you've took it from the intended cause. You know what I mean? Like if people take lots of things to charity and you take it before it actually gets there, then technically you are a thief, aren't you? To be honest, you know. I know it's nobody's technical property, so you've not stole it off an individual, but the intention of where it's supposed to go and the usage, you know what I mean, or whatever, like. Um, it was supposed to be for is no longer there because you stole it so it's actually really bad uh, you see on the news sometimes here in the uk that people are going to the cemeteries and they'll take flowers off people's graves and that is low isn't it me imagine being in a position in your life where you walk into somebody's uh grave and and take the flowers off it that somebody's just laid down for their loved one that, that's madness i mean that's way more extreme than this but it's just kind of the same thing you know what i mean just taking things that are in the open that are not yours just because you like them you know what i mean now they were talking about these glasses that he proposed to lenin i mean we, we didn't get anywhere from there or anything it wasn't even mentioned once after he was in the bar but i've been thinking ever since he said it that that's is that not technically a thing that kind of happens here in 2024 you know if you look at it when I first went to the IMAX, no, I can't remember how long it was ago, but I was probably in school. So let's just say 10, 12 years ago, when you was first in the cinema and it was 3D, like things used to fly in your face. Like you used to physically sit there and like the numbers used to fly in and you used to like dodge it and it felt like it was coming to you like 3D. You know what I mean? But like nowadays, 3D is pretty much just a movie where the characters are kind of more detailed you know they stand out a bit more they look 
3D, yeah, no, obviously. But like the background is still crisp and clear, but the characters feel like they're a little bit closer. You could feel like they're more real like, like a body stood there, not a pixel on the screen. But at the end of the day, it's not really 3D, is how I was brought up. Like when I was a kid, used to get some. Uh, I think it was some glasses in the in like the newspaper and it had a red lens and a blue lens and you put it on I think Spy Kids 3D might have been like one of the first films I ever actually watched and like you know you, you put your glasses on blue and red and you watched it and uh, you know everything was flying at your face and it felt like you was going to get hit but that's not 3D anymore and it kind of has happened I feel like in this show they've done a few things like the app where you take pictures of your clothes and you could sell it online that happens all of the time you know you got Vinted, eBay you know what I mean um you have apps that are very similar where you could take a picture of the item and it will show you over similar ones. So you could take a picture of your Jordans and they'd be like, you know, here's an alternative. Something that looks exactly the same, but somewhere else. Leonard made this app where it was solving equations. You could take a picture of it, it'd do it, it'd solve it quickly. I feel like that's around as well. And I do feel like, you know, most films nowadays can be watched in the 3D. You know, it's not flying in your face, but it could be created with a pair of glasses that you put on if you're in the IMAX or if you're in the, um, I think it's Dolby Atmos. In there, I watched, um, what did I watch in there now? Avatar, the new one. Oh, mate, it was crisp. It was clean. And um, that film was sick as well. So I feel like quite a few things in this show that they've mentioned are in fruition in 2024. Like, they're very popular and, they, and they're all active and working successfully. Hey, that is going to wrap up today's episode. Thanks so much for checking out my channel today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Another episode where Sheldon's been a decent friend, you know what I mean? I feel like his character is, like, really rapidly growing. And, they, I mean, it's kind of strange to see that because he's already, like, the main character, the strong personality and the guy that kind of dominated the scenes. But, like, I also feel like recently he has become... Um, a relationshipy guy you know he's getting a bit lovey-dovey a little bit jealous but i also feel like he's being a good friend in terms of standing up for people but you know like backing them up he's um he always bigs people up as kind of as well and i feel like um you know he's actually gaining more confidence and and about himself and in today's episode there you know what i mean lenny couldn't really spit it out and he stood up and he's um you know he's basically got his back he's been his bro he's been a friend and you know, it's kind of disappointing that the guy actually come and he apologised to Leonard, which was really good. You know, he's seen the error of his ways. And the kind of like Penny did when she realised that she was a bully in school and she's calling and she's making apologies. But this guy's come and he said it and he's accepted it, which is great stuff. But then in the morning, it's all gone downhill. And it, obviously, like, he's retracted it because he can't remember him saying it because he was drunk and he's fell back into Leonard being the bullied and obviously having to run away. But big up to him because he stood up to him. And also, you know, he didn't really get him out of his apartment and he, he didn't really successfully do anything. But at the end of the day, you got to take small wins, marginal gains. And um, you got to say fair play to him. And um, he might have left the apartment, but he's left with confidence. And uh, I'd be happy with him anyway, with the effort that he put in. So that was really interesting as well. Thanks for checking out today's episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please smash like. Really helps out. Subscribe if you do. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers, guys.